Okay. Hi, I'm Charlene Liu. I am a master's student currently at AOMA, um, and I graduate in July of next year. And so the reason why I came to acupuncture is because my mother is an acupuncturist and she trained in Shanghai, China at their TCM school. And that inspired me over the years to follow in her footsteps to become an acupuncturist. And so we thought it would be interesting to explore um, the stories and the reasons why certain practitioners followed in their family footsteps and um, continue to practice traditional Chinese medicine. With us today, we have Dr. Son Lo, um, who is a, who was one of the professors at AOMA and also um, um, was inspired by his grandfather to um, continue doing traditional Chinese medicine. Dr. Lowell, thank you for joining us today. Can you go ahead and introduce yourself briefly? Thank you for the invitation, Shirley. Okay. And thank you for calling uh, all the invitation. My name is uh, Song Lo. Uh, I'm the professor in Aoma uh, Graduate School. You know, I graduated from Chengdu University of Traditional Chinese Medicine. And, uh, after that, I worked in Sichuan State Hospital you know, for more than 12 years there, okay? So where we have uh, served a lot of patients yeah, uh, every day and also have a lot of the uh, students to supervise. Yeah. Uh, after coming to the United States in 2005, I worked in Aoma. Yeah, I have served here for more than 15 years. Yeah. I primarily you know, give a didactic class to students and also supervise the uh, students, intern, and and also we have uh, many off-campus clinic I supervise there, including Sidon Medical Center, Sidon Toffer, Sidon Makasi, and uh, recently we have uh, supervised the VA outpatient clinic for more than uh, three years. Yeah. So I'm also very blessed to uh, have the chance to join Johns Hopkins. Yeah, I studied public health and graduate. Uh, uh, this year. Yep. Congratulations on graduating, Dr. Lo, and everything that you've accomplished. I know um, many students, including I, um, really enjoy your classes and we really have learned so much from you. Um, so if you can go ahead and kind of talk a little bit about what got you into traditional Chinese medicine, what inspired you to um, go to school for this medicine? Yeah, this is a very good question. Thank you for asking. I think the primary reason is my uh, family reason. Yeah, you know, I, my great grandfather, yeah, great grandpa, uh, who was 90 years old at that time, I was living with my great grandpa in northern China. So I have a chance to go to his clinic and also see the patients. Yeah. And also last time we mentioned a story uh, at middle night of the winter, yeah, one young guy yeah, came to uh, my great grandfather. Uh, apartment, they knocked on the door and asked my great grandfather if he could follow him to treat his wife and home. It was very cold, but my great grandfather, uh, without any hesitant, went there. So that's uh, very impressive by uh, that image. So this is one of very important reason. Another reason is, uh, you know, in China. Now uh, we have the uh, TCM Medical School, which teaching not only TCM, but also biomedicine, so integrated. Yeah, so that's also very interesting. And in China, also in the hospital, yeah, we have a lot of different uh, specialty, including the TCM. So 90% of the hospital in China uh, has TCM department. So we have a chance to use TCM to serve all the patients in different department. Yeah, we have around uh, two thousand bed in our hospital, Sichuan State Hospital, and more than twenty department. Yeah, we have a lot of patients every day. We could use uh, Chinese medicine to help a lot of people. Thank you. Uh, okay, that's that's very interesting. Um, what have you always been interested in following in your family's footsteps, or was there a time when you wanted to explore something different? Yeah, I think uh, uh, I always really want to follow my family step, yeah, for TCM. Because I have quite a few entry uh, relatives, uncle and aunt, uh, a doctor, either the nurse, either TCM doctor or Western doctor. So I'm very lucky to follow them. But uh, at the same time, I'm also very interested to, uh, 
how to interpret uh, different kinds of medicine. Because uh, I believe, yeah, different types of medicine uh, has its own nature, has its own advantage. Yeah, usually it is uh, related to its own culture. Yeah, so if you could combine the different uh, medicine system and uh, use it on the patients, patients could benefit the most from them. So this is why I try to not only follow my uh, family step, but also want to combine different type of medicine to help them. Thank you. That's great. Um, talking about the integration of Chinese medicine and Western medicine, how does that medical system look like in China? Uh, in China, the uh, medical system is slightly uh, different because uh, TCM in China has a a thousand years okay, history there. So almost all the uh, hospital has a biomedicine department and also has a TCM department. And also many uh, TCM medical school, not only teaching TCM, but also teaching biomedicine. So they are integrated uh, in all the field. So that is. And also another thing is uh, in the treatment, Actually, we have more choice in China. We have uh, not only uh, acupuncture, but also we have some herbal medicine. Some herbal medicine, we have uh, either RD or either IV agent. So we have different type of uh, herbal medicine to serve the patients. So that is a, uh, one of the big difference. And another condition is the herbal. Just as I always see, not only has different type of the agent, but also herbal could treat a lot of different diseases yeah, in clinic, serve a lot of different kinds of patients, internal medicine, and also neurology, and also surgery, all could be used some herbal to take care, yeah, to help the medical doctor yeah, to address more condition. But in this country, United States, uh, because we have a very short uh, history, yeah, introduced since 1971, yeah, Acupuncture introduced this country only in 50 years in this country. So primarily is acupuncture is developed very well. Yeah, most people, many people have the, uh, to have acupuncture treatment in clinic or in the hospital. And also our AOMA graduate uh, also work in uh, Minnesota ER. Yeah, so they use acupuncture to treat them. But herbal, in terms of herbal, we don't have too much choice. Yeah, we only primarily uh, provide herbal to uh, AOMA students or AOMA patients. But in, in a large uh, part of the group of patients, we mean no chance to use herbal. And also we don't have any uh, IV yeah, agent. So this is the issue. I think this is related to our uh, research because we need to do more research, especially evidence-based research. Uh, how about the effect of herbal uh, in clinic in this country? I think the next step, we have to do this in order to expand the usage of Chinese herbal. Thank you. No, oh, thank you. Um, so how would you ideally integrate Western medicine and Chinese medicine? Now that you've kind of seen how both countries integrate it, what would you personally like to see? Andrew, this is a very, very huge question. Yeah, very huge question. How to integrate uh, biomedicine and Chinese medicine. First, you have to know Chinese medicine and biomedicine. Then you could start to find a way how to safely and properly to integrate them together. Let me give an example. Maybe that's make everybody easier to understand. Take stroke example. Yeah, that's one of my specialty okay, uh, for the stroke patients. You know, in TCM, oh, we call it a wind stroke because well, the symptoms all of a sudden happen. And that's match the nature of wind. So we give the name wind stroke. In biomedicine, we say stroke. And how about the nature of this uh, of a stroke? In TCM, we say, oh, there maybe has well, some jelly clots, we call blastasis, or some uh, blood heat or qi deficiency, okay? Different type of differentiation uh, in terms of the nature. In biomedicine, they say, well, oh, cerebral hemorrhage or ischemia. So this is, uh, this is based on the biomedicine. And how about diagnosis methods? In TCM, we have one. Well, we have uh, four diagnosis methods. Yeah, we have uh, uh, observation, listening, smelling, interrogation, and palpation of the body and the pulse. In biomedicine, well, oh, we have a physical exam. Yeah, we have also CT, MRI, or uh, angiogram, 
yeah, in order to diagnose is a stroke patients based on the uh, how urgent the patient is. Okay, so it's a little bit different. Okay, and actually you could combine them in clinic. Okay, you could use the same diagnosis methods to give differentiation. Oh, this is what's differentiation: blood disease, is blood heat. Oh, you could use biomedicine to very accurately locate where the problem is. Yeah, this is uh, how you could combine clinic. And in terms of the location, things we're talking about, in TSM we say stroke as well. Oh, this patient is a, got a stroke, which belongs to uh, attacking channel. Yeah, we have a 12 regular channel. We have a, a mostly maybe Yang Ming channel in TSM, okay, for the stroke patients. Or we have a five zan, six fu organ. This is how do we say location, where the problem is. Oh, this is a liver problem, this is a kidney problem, this is a TCM uh, location. In biomedicine, they say, well, hey, especially in neurology, you know that, okay? Oh, this is a cerebral hemorrhage, this is a brainstem, this is cerebellum. So which part, okay? The located, exactly located. And uh, which artery is anterior, the middle, or posterior, uh, cerebral artery? So this is a, a your neurologist where we located this uh, during the diagnosis. And also which tract has been involved, okay? This is a corticospinal tract or spinothalamic tract. So which control either the motor, motor or sensation, so different things, okay? So this is a biomedicine, how to control that, yeah. So actually all these location diagnoses could help you uh, even more deeply to take care of the location. They could you combine this in your TCM diagnosis. Yeah, oh, this is a, uh, the brain issue, or this is a tract issue. Our treatment may be based on differentiation is slightly different. We could combine it. Of course, the most important is the treatment. Yeah, the treatment. We have a diagnosis, we have all the differentiation. The treatment actually based on the acute or the, or the maybe rehab stage of the stroke, we have a different type of treatment. We could give a acupuncture, or based on what, based on just on say four diagnosis methods. Or we need to turn up the chi. We need strains in the muscles, uh, strains, or we need to uh, move in the blood. Yeah. Or in the rehab, most is a chain blood stagnation or with some flame retention. So we based on differentiation to give a different treatment. So acupuncture has a, a very good result for part of the stroke patients, okay? Not all the stroke patients, because stroke patients could have uh, different prognosis. Some is very severe, especially a large part of the brain has been involved. So the prognosis is not too good. But for the most of the stroke patients, acupuncture could help muscular strains. Yeah, because acupuncture is a very, very special treatment. He used one, uh, the needle. This needle actually is sterilized. Compared to the body, is a foreign body. He inserted a needle, break you, breaks through the skin, actually will trigger immune response. Yeah, and also because it's go to the muscle spindle, they will help our calcium release. So that could help enter the muscle to exercise, even when you're paralyzed, but they will improve your muscle strength. Because other kind of treatment you think about in clinic, not too many channels could directly stimulate the muscle. You could do physical exercise, Exercise, that's also help. But what kind of treatment could directly involve the muscle and very close to nerve to stimulate it? Actually, it's very few. This is why acupuncture could be, acupuncture could be used for different stage of the stroke, as long as it's used very safely, okay? As long as it has enough experience. For the acute, we could use, but of course, under the strict monitor, okay? And in the chronic, in the rehab stage, we could use. This is actually, when I was in China in the hospital, I treated stroke uh, from ICU, then from the acute stage and chronic stage, rehab stage, all the stages. The ICU we still use. We could have the way safely use acupuncture to improve the muscle strength. Yeah, that's actually, how did that combine? Combine the two medicine, yeah, based on the different disease, use TCM differentiation and use the TCM methods to treat different stage uh, by medicine disease. Yeah, hope that answered your question. Thank you. It did, Dr. Lil, thank you. Um, as a follow-up to that, have you been able to work in United States hospitals and do kind of the same stroke recovery treatment that you did in China? Yeah, uh, that's a very good question. <laughs> and also very excited, okay? 
Uh, in China, we treat a lot of patients, uh, stroke patients in the neurology department. We have almost uh, more than 200 beds for the neurology department have three story. So every day go upstairs, downstairs to treat this. In this country, yeah, not too many people know acupuncture could use for stroke patients. When I go to uh, St. Davis initially, I, I see the a stroke unit, yeah, that stroke panel, uh, which includes neurologists and nurse, uh, physical therapist, language therapist, but no acupuncturist. They don't know acupuncture could help muscle strains. Yeah, because it's a very short history, very short history. So I understand it. Okay, but uh, uh, very good things we start to use in outpatient clinic, outpatient in St. Davis, yeah, and also uh, inpatient department yeah, in different hospital. Yeah. Uh, I remember uh, one of the case in uh, St. Davis inpatient department, stroke patients. That's actually is only slightly uh, after one week of the stroke. So pretty cute. And we start getting treatment. We monitor all the vital signs very carefully. I go there Friday afternoon. Yeah, I give, I think it's only five treatment there. So one afternoon, when I finish my work in Uma and then go to St. Davis, oh, that's on third floor, the patient on third floor. When I just step off the elevator of the third floor, I heard some very loud laugh in the hospital from the one room. I just said, wow, what happened? <laughs> okay. So then I go to the patient's room in the world. Actually, I saw my patient sitting on the bed. He's having dinner at that time, around 5.30 p.m. And uh, their son, their daughter, the grandson standing around her. Yeah. The reason they're very happy is, well, for the first time in the last couple of weeks, this patient Patient started using her right hand to feed herself. This never happened before. So we only give eventually separate treatment. So the effect in, to increase muscle strength is pretty fast. Of course, this is because it's early. Okay? If you come here six months later, that will be slow. So this is why I suggest that you go slightly early, but it's early. The issue is you have to make sure you have experience not cause any other complication in the acute stage. That means treating safely at different stage of patients. Yep, that is my answer, thank you. That is amazing. I'm glad that you've been able to use your expertise in America also. So to kind of pivot back um, to your family, you mentioned that your aunt, your uncle, um, have you ever gotten the chance to work with them in like in a medical uh setting? Uh, when I was in northern China, I was very, very young. Yeah, entry is only uh, two, five years old. So, but I go to uh, my great grandfather clinic called Nanfeng Clinic, which is around uh, 12 miles from home. Okay. And also, I went to my aunt. My aunt is a nurse or the nurse there. So, I went to her clinic. So, in my childhood, when I talk about uh, hospital, I immediately uh, remind me the white sheets, white table of my uh, great grandpa clinic and my aunt's clinic. Uh, I don't think we could work with them. I was too young to do that, <laughs> okay. Yeah, thank you. Um, okay, what, uh, what excites you the most about growing up with, with traditional Chinese medicine? Do you have any other cool experiences or stories to share with us? Yeah, just as I see. One big reason is uh, in clinic, yeah, we could see a lot of very good results from the treatment with acupuncture. Okay? Just now I shared the uh, St. Davis in the United States, yeah, in this country. And also we have uh, uh, other cases, yeah, other cases. For example, in China, I remember uh, one of the stroke patients uh, reminded me this story. Yeah. One day, I think it's a Saturday, one weekend, yeah, my dad went out to buy some dumpling in the market. My dad came, came back, looks very happy. She asked, she said, did you treat the patients who looks like a, what, what, what's the name? So I said, mm, I'm not sure. <laughs> I cannot remember, okay. Yeah, I said, what happened? He said, when I go there, went there to buy dumpling, the boss who sell the dumpling, he said, are you the father of the duck law? My father said, oh yes. 
how, how do you know? He said, you look very similar to Dr. Wang. <laughs> so my patient never seen my, my parents clean this bed. So he just guessed. Yeah, so that's really amazing. Uh, so I said, yes, yes. I said, oh, yeah, you, how, how did I help you? How acupuncture would help the stroke? Right now, he recovered very well. He could use the finger to make dumpling. No problem. Okay, no problem. He said, I don't want to charge you. You just take dumpling away. My father said, no, 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 I'll pay you. Okay. This, but I, my dad was very happy when he came back home, asked a story. I even actually almost uh, cannot remember. But he say that, oh, I know, make dumpling. Yeah, so I know which patient he was. Yeah. That's what was very excited. That actually. is amazing. A lot of help you, you know, keep on going because many patients, you know, the life could be changed by the treatment. The paralyzed patient, they could stand. And the stroke patient, they could start work yeah, if you treat him properly and safely. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I, I have similar experiences growing up in my mom's clinic. I basically grew up in the clinic in the back room, and then I worked there in high school for as a receptionist. And some of my best memories is meeting the patients as they come out, and they say, oh, do you know how amazing Dr. Tso is? And then when they know that she's my mom, they'll be like, she helped me. She changed my life forever, you know, and it's it's like I always thought of her as my mother first and then as doctor second. So to really see the impact she made, that, that was a huge factor in why I chose to do this medicine because I wanted to make the same difference and I wanted people to tell my loved ones, you know, how much that I changed their life. So, yeah, exactly. Um, let's see. Uh, what differences did you see growing up in China about the medicine? Um, that is different here. Uh, I think uh, that I see primarily I think is uh, acupuncture. Yeah, acupuncture is almost developed very well both in China and the United States. But herbal, maybe slightly uh, less. Maybe one of the reasons is because uh, uh, it's much more complicated to research on herbal. Because each single herb has a lot of ingredients. And if you, if you have a 10 uh, single herb mixed together in the formula, and, and under special temperature cooking. That's entered is make it uh, even more complicated to research. This is one of the uh, big difference. I hope we could do more, uh, not only acupuncture, but also the herbal research to make more people uh, benefit from that. Especially, you know, some herbal uh, has an antivirus function, could be used with coronavirus. Right now we could only use for, uh, you know, patients of AOMA who had a, uh, coronavirus patient, okay? But we cannot use for large uh, population, yeah, to help them. This is one of the big difference. I hope we have some uh, improvement in the future. Second is, shall I say, because of the history uh, of TCM in China, I think that more than 90% of the population has tried, has known uh, TCM treatment, either herbal, either acupuncture. But in this country, even has been widely known by many people, still, uh, still the small population know acupuncture or uh, Chinese herbal, especially herbal, maybe even, even fewer people. So we hope we could uh, uh, have some improvement in the next maybe 10 years. And also we hope, especially uh, many uh, hospital settings, we could have uh, acupuncturists you know, who graduated from Elma or other you know, TCM school to serve patient there. They will notice how much entry acupuncture could safely serve patients in a hospital setting. Yeah. I Thank agree you. with that. Um, I took herbal drug and safety class this term and a lot of what we discussed was herbs and the interactions between Western medicine, but also herb and herb interactions. And some herbs have, you know, negative or positive interactions with other herbs and it, it, it does a lot to learn. Um, so I agree with you on the fact that I think herbal medicine needs to be of stronger emphasis in America. Um, I brought the same question up to my mother and she, she said the same thing, that herbal medicine is much stronger in China and it's um, is more important and I think more widely accepted than it is here in America. Um, do you and, uh, and, yeah. uh, I could also give you an example of the herbal, how, how effective herbal could be. That's a very 
direct and simple example I have experienced maybe just uh, I think it's one and a half years ago. We know uh, Shingo, Nanju, Shingo. Yeah, herpes zoster infected. It's a virus uh, related problem. And when I was in China, I met uh, one of my uh, family member who has a uh, shingle. She had to work in the hospital and very stressful, very busy. He got shingle, but I don't know till I went back to China, see my parents and see my family. Oh, I noticed. Then I started getting herbal. You know, the long dan shi gan tang, okay, very, very commonly used. I use raw herb. I cook every day to let my family take it. At the same time, yeah, you know, my family also go to the hospital and use IV and medication. That's biomedicine medication, antivirus herbal. Okay, many biomedicine medication also good for herpes zoster. Yeah, use IV. You know, of course, it's different. IV uh, biomedicine. You know, the medicines there's no taste. Is that true? That's very good. Yeah, very very easy to accept it. But the herbal. The cooking herbal tastes not too good. Yeah, I also let my family drinking a lot. So, oh, after actually three, four days, yeah, the herpes monster get much less. Yeah, so my, my family started deciding, mm, I think since I'm getting better, I could stop the very bitter uh, herbal. I could continue the IV, okay? So he decided to do that. But actually, as soon as it stopped the next day, he has new blister shoot up. So you could see the herbal looks like just some decoction. It's pretty powerful. So my, my family immediately started to retake the herbal because notice if we stop, he will, this is not a cure yet. This is still too early, only four days, five days. Yeah, within one week. So this is why I say right now, herbal in this country as well, uh, in FDA, is belong to the food. But in the future, if there is more research, I'm, I'm sure so many medical uh, centers, so many medical school, they have very powerful research sources. They will notice it is much more than food. Yeah, it's much more than food. It could be very powerful, very specifically treating some disease. You cannot treat all the disease, but some disease will be very good result. Yeah, thank you. I, yeah, I actually completely agree with that. I think in America, often herbs is thought of as a preventative and less as a treatment during an acute disease. But even for something like shingles, you know, we see that Long Tan Shi Gan Tan made a huge difference. And she noticed it, she stopped and then came back. And then so she was like, okay. So she started taking the herbs again. So it's not just preventative, it can actually treat at the same time with biomedicine. Um, and I think something else interesting being in America is, and we discussed this in several of my classes, is there are herbs that are indigenous to America, Western herbs that could be potentially added to Chinese herbs and kind of um, be more native to America as opposed to only relying upon Chinese herbs. What do you think about that? Uh, I think that's a very good uh, a good field. But to be frank with you, I'm very familiar with the uh, Chinese medicine, Chinese medicine herbal. I'm not very familiar with uh, here American herbal, so I cannot give very, very accurately suggestion to this. As long as the, uh, there's no any interaction, especially some negative interaction, I think it'll be fine. It could, could be a try, but I, I cannot give a suggestion because uh, I haven't used that before. I all know here has a, a American botanic garden in Austin. We have moved some Chinese herbal planted there. And in that garden, it also has a lot of native herbal. But I'm not familiar with that herbal, so I cannot say that. <laughs> okay, I'm not sure. Thank you. Sorry. Yeah, no, I just wanted to know. Um, I think in the future, I think there needs to be more research done, both for Chinese medicine, but also in potentially more Western herbal medicine um, yeah. with biomedicine. Um, <clears throat> Um, is there anything else that you think is important um, to note between kind of your generational ancestry and why you went into acupuncture or in Chinese medicine and then sort of the future in America? I think, yeah, this is another very important question. Okay. I, I hope, you know, uh, in the future, 
TCM, acupuncture, and herbal medicine, or other traditional uh, herbal medicine, yeah, which is uh, uh, exist in this country, could be developed to help biomedicine system yeah, serve patients. Yeah, because I, I strongly believe yeah, the medicine, each medicine has its own advantage and which is uh, uh, based on their own unique culture. Yeah, each culture should have some uh, essence advantage in, uh, inside. So I hope uh, use a very, very powerful yeah, research background in the medical system. Yeah, many other medicine uh, system could be uh, studied and researched uh, even deeper. In that way, actually, they may find some of the herbal medicine or acupuncture system could be very powerful assistant to the biomedicine, or even some herbal medicine could be used as a biomedicine system. That's happened in China. Many Chinese herbal right now, they have Amper, they have IV. Many biomedicine doctors, they just use that as a West medicine because it's fast, convenient, and effective. So not like all the herbal, like decoction, bitter taste. Yeah, so like that. So this is one in terms of research. Second, from the you know, structure perspective, medical structure perspective, I hope someday uh, in this country, the most hospital medical center or clinic could be open to acupuncture and herbal. Of course, you could have very strict research and study ahead of time to make sure how to control any possible risk. Yeah, just like VA, we have been there for more than three years. Yeah, all the treatment there is very safe, you know, very helpful for the veteran. This could happen in any hospital, could happen in any state. Yeah, as long as it has a very strict supervision. Yeah as long as it has a very good training acupuncturist yeah, or the doctors. This is my, uh, my wish in the future. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Lo. Um, I believe that's all the questions I have for you today. Thank you so much for joining us and um, discussing TCM to the generations and also um, talking more about the integration between Western and Chinese medicine. I really appreciate you coming in today. Thank you for the invitation. Thank you for all the questions. Yeah, I hope all the patients could benefit from this conversation. Thank you.